Hello. I made some new cells and I thought I'd share them with everybody. Kind of a fun thing to do. <laughs> anyway, uh, I went and I was looking at the uh, Plango Free Energy and on his channel he has a video called Crystal Cell 15. And that's, this is what I've duplicated. I was just going to show you how I did it and what kind of results I've got. Okay. I started out with a cap like this. It's just a one inch, three quarter inch copper cap and a piece of magnesium, a little over five eighths inch long with a brass screw screwed down the side, inside of it with a little, for a little hole I drilled there. Put it in and I took that and I wrapped it with a piece of paper towel like that. Once I had it wrapped I took a little tiny strip of paper tape and taped the paper towel in place so it wouldn't come unrolled and then I set it inside of here. And that gets me started now for the components that went in there uh, which Plenigo used. If you go to his channel and look at that he does a real good job of explaining how he did this and how he made it and how he mixed everything. I'm gonna do the best I can on mine here. Uh, what I did here is I used uh, sodium silicate, premium activated charcoal, which is just an aquarium filter product, and alm, which you can get at any uh, supermarket just about. Anyway, the uh, sodium silicate, I poured about an eighth inch into the bottom of a bowl like this here. And I let it dry. And uh, as it dried, I took a stick, a little popsicle stick like this, and I break it up once in a while. So it uh, ended up be kind of a, after a day and a half about, kind of like a pile of crystals. Then I took the, uh, I went and picked up a little uh, coffee grinder or spice grinder. And I uh, took some of the charcoal, I put it in it and I ground it up. Yeah, boy, does it make dust. <laughs> I have to learn, I learned to leave it settle a while before I opened it. Anyway, uh, I ground it up and I put it in a container like this. And then I took and I ground up the dried sodium silicate in the same little grinder and ended up with a product that looks something like this. This is kind of dark colored because it's a uh, I had ground the carbon first in the little grinder. Uh, anyway, this is the dried, ground up sodium silicate. Then I uh, took a little, I set this on a piece of paper, and I took a little spoon, like so, <laughs> and I, well, first, first of all, I, I took and uh, mixed two spoons of each of the. Uh, Two of the alm, two of the carbon, and two of the sodium in a container. This one right here. And I uh, mixed them together real, real good. But equal amounts. For each cell I used two little quarter teaspoons like this, maybe rounded a little bit, uh, of each. Alm, carbon, and sodium silicate. Then I, then I spooned it in here. Remember the paper's wrapped around this now. And I spooned it in here until it was full. And I took this and wiggled it up and down just a tiny, tiny bit. I had to put a piece of paper in the bottom of it ahead of time too, by the way. Uh, and I tapped it and got it all settled in real good. And then I took my meter and I hooked up to it to see what I would get, if anything. And since I was perfectly dry, I didn't use no water at all, I didn't get anything. I got zero volts and zero amps. Now I hook my meter to it and I uh, I got 1.7 volts and 40 milliamps after I added water to it. I ordered, I, I added about uh, two little eyedroppers of water like this to it and it just popped right up there. Uh, well, next I, I, I made four of them by the way 
and I'm running tests with uh, all four of them right now. Uh, one of them, I decided to just let it dry out. And I let it dry for five days. And I ended up with 1.8 volts, a little bit higher, and only a, less than a half of a milliamp. I hooked that up to a, a jewel thief like this one right here, and it wouldn't even light it up. I was very surprised. So I added water <laughs> again to it. And it came up to 1.65 volts and 40 milliamps. So I'm kind of realizing that I'm going to need water to run these things. Because once they dry out, they uh, they just kind of die. So I have one here that I, I wicked. Uh, I'm wicking a little water into it with a piece of string. And it's running uh, this little pulse motor here. It's been running it for about five days now, and, and I haven't had to add any water at all. So it's working good. I have one back here. I don't know if you can see that the sun the way it is. <laughs> it's running a little uh, jewel thief. It's been running for five, six days now. And I have one right here. It's running a little jewel thief. On this one here, instead of wicking it, I went down near the bottom, right down in here, and I drilled a little tiny hole, very, very small hole. And uh, just set it in a little cover that 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 like that and put some water in it and let it let it suck up water that way and it's been working great i mean i haven't had to do a thing to it and it's been running for now i'd say at least five days and it's burning two leds nice and bright no problem and i did another one over here if you can see this one so i have a sun problem again they did the same thing i drilled a little tiny hole in the bottom put it in a cover a little plastic cover and let it suck up water and it's been running this uh, motor here. That's funny, it looks like it's barely turning in here but it's really cranking. Uh, it's been running this for about five days now also. But I did find out one thing, they need water or they're just not going to run. So I've done a little experimenting since then on, on, this one, on a couple of them here. I know that the alum causes things to corrode up pretty bad. So I said, I'm going to try it without the alum. So on this one here, I just used the uh, the sodium silicate and the carbon, and I put a, a water in it that was a mixture, mixture of 50-50 water and Epsom salt. And uh, it, it, I wet it down, same as I did the rest of them. It's been running for well, several hours now. It's running this little jewel thief here. It's running just great. And I thought, well, I'm going to try one a little different yet. So what I did is I, I put one together here, and I took some sodium silicate that was ground up, and Epsom salts, and I powdered it. I ground it to powder. And then some carbon, I ground it to powder. And then I took them three items, and I mixed them up like so <laughs> in a bowl together. Instead of adding the uh, Epsom salts in the... Uh, water, I'm adding it right to the cell in the powdered form this time. And it looks just like this. <laughs> okay. Now then I did the same thing. I put two spoons of each in that cell right there. Two of the uh, uh, sodium silicate, two of the powdered Epsom salts, and two of the powdered carbon. And uh, I, again I put the meter on it because everything was perfectly dry. I got no reading at all. Nothing. So I turned around and I put water in it, uh, probably uh, a couple of droppers like this full I put in it. And uh, I got uh, 71 milliamps, 1 1.45 volts. And I waited about 45 minutes or so and I got almost exactly the same reading. So I, I, I got a feeling these are going to work just fine without the alm. I'm testing this one now with some power draw. This one I have no power draw on yet. And then the last video I made, I talked to you guys about my Epsom salt ones. This uh, this one here that's made out of the one inch cap and it's nothing but Epsom salt and uh, paper towel and a piece of uh, magnesium. 
as you've seen in the other video. Uh, it's been running for 26 days now. <laughs> and it's going great. That, that, that makes it for a pretty good little battery. This one over here in the uh, one inch cap, it quit uh, about four or five days ago. So I took and I drilled a little hole in the top. You see that little hole right there? I shot a little water in it and it's been going like crazy ever since. It, it just appreciated that little drink of water. So <laughs> it's working out pretty good. I'll be running more tests on these to see what they'll do. It's been a lot of fun. There's one more thing I want to show you while I'm doing this video. This little uh, jewel thief I put together the other day. See a lot of little blue wires on there. That's so I could accommodate the uh, two LEDs instead of one, like the drying call for. But here's the drying of it right here. I thought I'd show you. It's about the simplest one I've ever seen. Hopefully you can see that all right. It's uh, really, really, really simple. The uh, transistor, as you can see there, is a BC107 or an NTE123AP or a 2N4401. Now, on any, any one of them transistors will work good on there. And that's the configuration for the pins. But, uh, for a real, real, uh, real easy to build. I mean, there's no caps on that, no capacitors, no nothing. All this is a LED a, a, a toroid. That's a one inch toroid, by the way. And I wound it I, by hit and miss mostly. I, I think it's probably around 20, uh, maybe 28 gauge wire, 26 gauge. And it's got close to 100 winds on the one side and, and there are 10 on the other side. So it really works neat if you want to make one sometime. Real simple. And it came from Jewel Thief. She's called Jewel Thief very low input by Lashkoff Pro. You see his name right there. You can go to his channel and look right at it. Just a nice job. Well, that's about it for now. Hopefully, uh, I want to give uh, the uh, fellow that came up with these. Anyway, I want to thank him very much for uh, assistance he gave me in building his batteries. He did a heck of a nice job. So don't forget to go to Plengo. Thank you very much. Thanks much for watching.